Hello and welcome back to Michelle Mark Knitwear channel. So it's been a while, it's been like two months since you last um, saw my podcast and I think the last episode I was finishing up on the Fair Isle and yes yeah, so I've been very busy um, over the last few weeks um, I was going to do a podcast last weekend over the bank holiday, but the weather was so gorgeous, um, I didn't really want to stay inside. So, so there you go. Um, I thought I'd decide to um, do one today. Anyway, so let's get you up to date on what I've been doing and just to recap on my channel. So... I've been running this little channel for a few months now. Um, I thought it was a good idea and it was quite nice to be able to share my projects, um, especially for the vintage lovers out there, people that love vintage knitwear. Um, I have my own little hobby, um, which is also extended to an Etsy shop, which is Michelle Mark Knitwear. So you can find me on Etsy. Uh, with my ready-to-wear collection. Um, I don't knit to order generally, so I kind of get inspiration from some of my shelf full of wool and I'm very creative, so I kind of like to decide what to knit and when, so that's why I don't currently knit to order. But who's to say it may change if I ever get more time because I, I currently work full time so this is more like a hobby and um, just something to get lost in um, because it's it's very absorbing and relaxing and therapeutic. So anyway, so I'm going to, oh, it's quite warm here today, it's because it's quite warm and as you see the sun's reflecting in the background along with one of my finished projects. And I'm also wearing my finished project too. So you will recall, um, I think I might have shared this project on my last podcast, podcast number 13. Um, I've already knitted one of these. It's a Jaeger, I think it's a 40s pattern. It's got all the puff sleeves. So I've already knitted one of these, which you may have seen me on, a, on an old podcast, um, wearing like a, a primrose yellow version. Uh, with a beret, not a beret, a turban. So I decided to knit one. I had this this lovely sort of um, apple green wool, which was a different texture to the other one because the other one was like a merino. So it was a bit slippery, the wool. So it was a bit, you know, sometimes it slipped off the needles when I was knitting it. So yes, it wasn't as enjoyable to knit this one, but the result was still the same. As you can see, it's just got a lovely little waistband and lovely collar. And I'm also wearing a nice little brooch. I do like to wear little brooches that just kind of decorate the collar on some of these old designs. So anyway, um, now I'm always knitting turbans. And as my hair, I haven't been to the hairdressers for months and months. And to be honest... I've got to the stage now where I haven't been for so long. Um, I do, as you can see, I have got a fringe and I am a bit naughty. And I always have been one of these people that likes perfection. So I have got a habit of <laughs> of cutting my own fringe. So it might look a bit wonky, but it does the job. And it's not too bad. And as my hair's growing, I thought... It would be lovely to knit a snood. Now, most people crochet snoods and there's lots of tutorials on YouTube to crochet. Now, I'm not a crocheter. I can crochet edging with single crochet. I've mastered that recently, but I'm not confident to crochet. And it's the time spent. I don't have the time. I get a bit impatient and so anyway my task was to find a knitted crochet so i scoured the internet looking everywhere for a knitted version of course there isn't any and there aren't any tutorials on youtube for knitted versions all crochet 
So I looked through all my books. So I've got various um, vintage patterns, some crochet um, turbans. Um, even Susan Crawford, one of her books, has got a knitted crochet um, pattern in it, besides the crochet. But I was fortunate enough to find that in one of my books, which is entitled um, The Modern Knitting Illustrated, um, there was a knitted version that looks like crochet. So I thought, hmm, that looks really interesting. So it's a really simple pattern and it didn't take me long to knit it. Basically, you just knit a strip about 14 inches and then you double single crochet all around the edge then you get some sheer elastic and then you just run it through with a darning needle all the way round and get it to the tension that you want and there you go you got a snood so I'm wearing mine like this some people wear it back on their head but because I've got a fringe my sort of suits just wearing a bit forward so as you can see it's quite a nice design i think it looks just as good as a crocheted snood and it complements my little blouse so i'm really pleased with this and that means that i'll be knitting more snoods and also any any knitwear like 40s knitwear that i knit and sell on my etsy site well now it have a snood to match. So if it doesn't have a beret or a turban, it will have a snood. So in my last podcast, I did share with you my recent fair isle. Now I would have wore it today, but it's so hot and we are actually in summertime now. So this was on my dumb on my um mannequin on the last podcast and I was actually um, knitting a beret to match well it didn't come out quite like a beret it ended up like a little cap but I think um, it's a nice matching set now so perfect and I even fathomed out um, how to do the middle bit now this was funny because I kind of found a pattern I kept looking at different patterns I had and things on the internet as how to do this top bit because as you know I did follow a pattern that wasn't the same fair roll as this and the thing is the tension's always going to be different so when I got to this middle bit I I kind of just went along and made it up I made this pattern up could believe it I just thought hope for the best if it doesn't turn out very well then I can just undo it but hey ho I suppose I could put a little pom-pom on the top if I wanted to but it looks quite nice as it is so that's that so that's one finished project now another finished project um so yes I've been <laughs> I've been very busy for the last two months um one of my knitting pals, um, Billy, on the Show and Tell knitting um, channel, um, she shared a pattern that she was knitting, which is, I don't know if you can see, it's quite bright here, but this is the Mademoiselle design, which is a 1951. It's hard to see, and I haven't got a printout. I actually followed the pattern from my phone and just made notes so it's a beautiful design it's very sort of sailor like which I love and I just fell in love with it when I saw when she showed the pattern and I thought I must knit one so at the time um, I was looking for the right wool and I always want wool that I don't have so I was scouring eBay and some seller was selling four different colors in a lovely merino wool so I ended up bidding on all four colours and then I had the choice of what colours to choose so the colours I bought were 
a nice pink, like a candy floss pink, a navy blue, a cream, and um, what was the other colour? Oh, it's a light blue. So all them colours I love, and especially like with sailor designs. I've got quite a few sailor designs that I haven't knitted yet, so they will be used at some point in the future. So anyway, I got cracked on with this Madden cell, and I have now finished it. Now it was a challenge. I must admit, it was a challenge, and it was it quite like how you construct it in the pieces because basically you have these cuffs so you have this trim on the cuffs on the bottom and on the collar so yes yeah, so rather than the cream because billy was knitting the cream in the navy i didn't want to copy and i just thought well i do love pink and pink and navy go really well together so my version, that probably doesn't look very good when it's not on. So I'm probably, next time, I'll probably put it on the mannequin. But it's a beautiful, like the collar is just stunning. Um, that's the inside. So from the, from the back with the collar, you just see like an asymmetric. So you've got a bit of stripe on the back and um, so yeah the main design is on the front so what you had to do is you knitted the two bits of front and one side you don't knit the whole of the front you just go to a certain point so that it's sort of underneath and then you don't see it and believe it or not the buttons are mock buttons so they're not buttonholes and so yeah it's quite it's quite good how it looks because it just looks like they're not proper buttonholes um it's a beautiful soft merino so i'm looking forward to wearing that probably in the wind or autumn now um so yeah i'm i'm going to knit a hat to match with the stripe in it so I've been scouring my patterns. It's hard to find a hat or a beret with a stripe in it, but I have managed to find one. Let me just put my books aside. I can. Oh, I'm a bit crowded at the moment because we're decorating in the hall. So I've got loads of things in here in this room. So it is a bit cluttered. But it's hidden from you, so you can't see it. So yes, I am going to knit a hat. Actually, my hat pattern is in my little book. I've got a little notebook now. So my husband gave me one of his old notebooks that he didn't want. So I've now used it for writing notes for some of my patterns. Um, I've got a nice little hat pattern book here which is called the Knitted Hat Book. So it's got 20 hat designs in it. And I found one that I think I could use, which is a beehive cap. So I could kind of do a sort of stripey effect with that to go with that little sea, that little um, sailor jumper in the pink and the navy. So we'll see how that comes out. Hopefully that will work out quite well. So yes, I'm looking forward to doing that. Right, so what else have I been up to? Well, believe it or not, I've got about three projects on the go at the moment. What with the snood? Yes, yeah, so I'll share, show you the snood that I'm knitting, um, which is... Sorry, that's the wrong way round. So I'm knitting it on circular needles because it takes 8mm needles. And I don't have 8mm in the long needles, but I have this set which is interconnected with just little wires. So you just um, screw whatever, start, whatever size needle you want onto this. It's a beautiful set. But 
I find, I don't know if it's me, but I have to be careful if I'm knitting something on here. Uh, it could be how I hold my knitting needles, but sometimes it will come undone, <laughs> the screw. And it's awful if you've got loads of stitches on there and all of a sudden it comes off. Um, I don't know if it's me, the way I hold it. Maybe I'm, as I'm holding it and moving stitches, it, it gradually undoes the screw on bit. So, yeah, so I don't use these as much as I should. I know a lot of people love circular needles, but these ones I find it does have a problem. So I don't use them that often. But yeah, as you can see, look at that lovely, it's like a sort of, I don't know, because it's um, holy and it's like a little, um, what do you call it, a blackberry stitch. So yeah, so that's going to go with my ferrule because I had some wool left over. So that's that. So that's nearly finished. So I'm looking forward to finishing that one. Um, other things I've been knitting, as you can see on the dummy, on the mannequin. Um, I Now what happened, um, I wanted some wool to finish off a project. And the thing is, I ran out of wool to do the sleeves. It's a stripy top. It's beautiful. Red, white and blue striped little cardigan that does up at the neck so you you won't wear it undone you'd wear it all together but I ran out of wool so the problem is um I don't know I didn't keep the cone because it was on a cone of King Cole um anti-tickle merino so I don't know if it's sapphire because I do have a sapphire so I'm hoping, because I don't need a lot, I don't really want to buy a great big cone of it. Like they sell them on eBay for about £22 a cone. So I don't really want to buy a whole cone of it. So what I might do is look to see if anyone's got some, you know, not, not much left of a cone, maybe half a cone that they're selling on eBay. But I could maybe, you know, just order it just to see if it is the colour I need. So that is the problem. Um, I mean, I could knit the sleeves in just plain red, but I really want it in the same stripe as the body of this project. So anyway, waffling on. So hence, that is why I bought this wool, because I looked on, I can't remember, I think it was the Knitting Network was selling it, and obviously the colours didn't look right on the computer. So I went ahead and bought it, um, thinking, oh, that could be the one that goes with, you know, that is the same colour. And even though this is double knit, I thought, well, maybe I could pull the strands apart to sort of give you half, which would be four ply. So that was in my head what I was going to do. But when it arrived, it was nothing like the colour that I was looking for. Um, it's a merino... So it didn't come on the cone, but it came on like in um, 50 gram balls. So it's Merino Blend DK. Um, I bought 500 grams for £30, which I thought was pretty good, especially like for Superwash Merino Blend. So Merino Blend, it's 100% pure wool. It just has Merino wool in it, just give you that soft feel. So... I bought the wool and I thought, hmm, double knit, I could knit another cardigan. So I was scouring through all my knitting patterns and I came across this one, which is the Monarch. I think this is either Canadian or American. Um, it's a lovely 40s, actually no, it could be, yeah, I think it's 40s book actually. They're not easy, oh yeah, Ontario, so it's Canadian. So I found one of the designs in here, which I quite liked, and it's called the Crinkle Crepe Jacket. And I think there's a crinkly, it's a crinkly um, crepe that they used for this one. So that's what they use, a crinkle crepe. It's a um, beautiful little, like a little bomber jacket. So I think it's beautiful, really looks nice. And I thought, well, that looks simple to knit. Um, I like the details and the buttons. So I started knitting it 
and yeah it weren't too bad actually but I think um, it looks quite good um, it's quite easy to knit um, as you can see um, had plenty of wool um, found it difficult to find buttons to match it though I always struggle I've got loads of buttons in storage but every time we go I'm always feel rushed to try and look in my box because I've got buttons in different tins and it's really hard to find some that match so I always end up buying new buttons so I spent hours looking on Etsy looking on eBay trying to it's really hard sometimes but anyway so someone I normally buy on Etsy um, I bought some buttons and I thought yeah they go they're not too bad they're contrast so yeah in the end I thought yeah they went quite well um, the bit on here I put a press stud just so it keeps it from flapping over but yeah I'm quite pleased with it I had to do um, a single crochet edge on this so that's sort of testing my skill on my crochet because like I said I'm, I haven't always been a crochet person but I thought no I'll have a go because it neatened off the edges and I was quite pleased the bit on the bottom bit is a separate strip so you basically have to knit just the body front two fronts and the back and then you knit this separately and then you have to just accurately so it's no sort of you know you have to measure so the, the measurements are correct so you don't mm. have too much one side and not enough another so that was a bit of a challenge but it worked out okay so as before I do like to knit berets to match so as I've showed on previous um, I love knitting this it's so easy so basically you knit a great big strip and then you have to knit the the top bit and the bottom bit on each side like 96 stitches and I love this design it's just so easy and it's just different and it's got a bit of texture so the texture sort of perfect for this little design so that's one to wear when it gets a bit cooler it's too hot to wear things like that at the moment so there you go that's another one right how are we doing so we get in there so next on my needles in order of when I started is this lovely I'll show you the pattern in a minute but this is an, a really I've had this pattern for a long time and it's just been on my wish list to start knitting it now I need to I make notes because it's really old it's a really old pattern but I haven't seen anyone else knitting this there's probably someone out there that's knitted it but this to me is one of those treasures I found it ages ago I don't know where I found it but it's just beautiful it's a scotch wool hosiery um, knitting pattern um, probably from the 30s maybe late 30s early 40s um, it hasn't got shoulder pads or anything um, but it's just beautiful little vest so what you do is you knit the back you knit the two fronts and then you've got this vest um, that's separate that you then sew on um, to the two fronts so that's going to be quite interesting um, it's really slow growing though because I'm using vintage wool uh, Munro spun um, free ply 100% pure virgin wool so it's a really nice wool um, perfect for this project because I think the actual project was originally super fingering two ply so if I'd have used four ply it probably would have come out massive so I'm a good girl at the moment I do actually do my tension swatch because when you're knitting projects like this you can't afford to go wrong especially because it's so time consuming so it's working out okay um, it took ages though as you can see how big the bottom rib is it's just took ages 
so that's the boring bit and it's quite fiddly um, I do go wrong occasionally on this um, <laughs> but I'm getting there I've gone past the armhole edges so hopefully once I get that back bit, back bit done doing the two back um, two fronts won't be so bad so yeah that's working progress that's a slow working progress so don't expect to see much happening to that for a few months so right let's move on now another one of my favorite designs is a 50s now I do love the 50s I like the 40s but not many people knit 50s I mean there are a few people out there that knit 50s but not many people and I think some of the 50s designs are really nice so I've got this one of my stitch craft books I've got quite a few from the 50s it's got this beautiful design with like a turret um, trim now I've had this for quite a while and I've actually you knitted about two or three of these. I think I sold one quite a few years ago. Um, and it's a lovely design. And I've always knitted it in wool. But it's a summer pattern. So it really needs to have some cotton yarn. So I've got a shelf full of cotton yarn. Well, not quite a shelf full. But I've got a few cotton yarns that were left over from other projects. So I thought, hmm, I'll knit another one of these. Why not? Because it's summer. I felt like I had to have a summer project. So I chose my wall colours, which are these lovely lilac and purple. I do like my lilacs and my purples. So I've started knitting it. Um, I've knitted the turret, the turret bottom. That's quite nice. So it's got like a reverse stockinette so what you do is you you knit that piece and then you reverse and then when it's sewn together you have to sort of sew this and then that's the bottom bit um, it's also got because I've got a nice belt to go with it I do like knitting the belt um, you got these little little holes that you have to create for the belt to go through so that's a bit fiddly but once you've got past that then it should be quite straightforward so I'm cracking on with that knitting the back first so once I've done the back then obviously I can do the front and so that should be finished in probably a, a few weeks hopefully um, now I've got quite a few of the um, little, little buckles that go with, you know, I've got a collection in storage, but typical, I don't think I had a lilac or a purple one. So I was searching again. I do like looking for things because I love things to match. So I found this little purple sort of deco-y style one on Etsy. So that's perfect for this project. It actually cost me seven pound. I don't like paying a lot of things, a lot for things, especially when I, I could possibly have one in storage. But I thought I'm not going to take the chance. And I did see a couple for sale, but this one was the perfect and the best one out of two. Very similar buckles. So that's going to go with my latest project. So yeah, I'm quite pleased about that. So there you go. So what else have I been doing? Well, as you know, besides my knitting, um, I do like buying things as well. So I've been buying, um, I've been looking on eBay at some of the, the like re reproduction designs. Obviously, some, some things in the 70s and the 80s were designs based on some of the vintage patterns. So a couple of designs I bought recently. Um, I do like Jaeger. So I bought this design, which is probably something I'm going to knit maybe in the autumn, winter with some of my yarn. Maybe the Aaron, I think it might take Aaron yarn. It says here, Matchmaker DK. So maybe some of my double knit yarn, I could have a go at knitting that 
And what I liked about this, it had like the sort of 40s look. It's got sort of a nice sort of um, um, gathered um, shoulders, which I thought looked very 40s. And her hair, and she's wearing these lovely shoes as well, like sort of golfing shoes and, and tweed trousers. So that kind of drew me in. I thought, that's a lovely design. I'm going to have a go at that. So that's something to do in the winter. And also another one, which I thought was very cute, um, a 70s pattern, but it looked very 40s. I thought that was quite cute with a little bow. I mean, maybe I could knit it a bit cropped, a bit more cropped. But I like the bottom bit and the top bit. So I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy that one too. Maybe I'll knit the, the sleeves a bit shorter. I could um, make it a puffy sleeve, um, play about with that. I'm sure I could um, use that as a little template for something in the future. But I thought, you know, people spend a lot of money on these original patterns on eBay. I think the reason why some of the original patterns sell for a lot of money is because people who sell copies buy them for expensive amounts of money because they know they're going to get their money back by selling the copies of them. So that's why I find it very challenging to find some of these original patterns on eBay. So all I can say is, thank God, I bought all mine months and years ago before the mad rush to sell copies, because it's just flooded with copies now. And it, it does kind of, uh, yeah, it makes it more commercial it feels like it's commercial so it's really hard to have a pattern that hasn't been knitted a hundred times before you knitted it but there you go I think it's just but everyone wants to knit something a bit unusual and it's more challenging to find something unusual because it's flooded with photocopies so any you know it just makes it easier to access these intricate designs Right, so what else have I been doing? Well, interestingly, um, like a lot of people that love the vintage, um, in my collection, um, I've got even a, I've got a signed copy of the Susan Crawford Stitching Time. Now, I knew that there was an original. This was based on the original book that came out in the seventies by Jane Waller. So. I've been looking out for the original book. In fact, there are two original books and I've managed to get two. I've got one of each. So at first I, I didn't realise I, I got the, the first original um, copy for a really good price. Um, I thought well, maybe it was the same as the one I'd already got, but it isn't and it's a lot thicker. So as you can see, I've got two of the original stitching times, but they're different. And I didn't realise that when I bought the second one. So I was really chuffed. So I thought maybe, just maybe, because it's got more pages, it's actually got some things in it that weren't in the second print. And believe it or not, there is a couple of things in it because I went through each page comparing to see if there was anything in the original version because there was more pages to it that wasn't in the reprinted version. So that's the reprint, the second reprint. And this one is the original. It's not as in good condition but it's got a lot more pages. So yeah, that's fascinating. So as I said, I'm a collector. So it's nice that I've got all three copies just for something to do and just because I like collecting them. So you never know. One day they might, might be left in my will to somebody. <laughs> Right, so what have I been watching on, on my box recently? Well, a lot of people, well, not everyone knows, but I don't watch television. You know, I'm a DVD collector and I love watching period dramas, 
and old period dramas, things that were shown back in the 70s, the 80s, and even recent ones. So I do like to buy DVDs and watch them. So what have I watched recently? Well, I don't know if anyone remembers The House of Elliot. Um, I used to watch, well, I never watched it when it was on television because I think it was always on at lunchtime for all those women that were stay-at-home mums and people that didn't work. So if you were one of those people back in, I think, the 80s or the 90s, uh, I can't remember when this came out. But anyway, if you were one of those people, you would have watched and followed The House of Elliot, a BBC production. Well, it's about um, the lives and the loves of two sisters and obviously their business that they grew from, you know, small beginnings to a real lovely couture. Um, house um, in London I think it was in London but it was a beautiful series and the costumes were absolutely marvellous it starts out I think in the early 20s and it goes through all the periods and it ca I think it brings you up to date with um, I think it's 40, is it 40s or I can't remember actually what period it comes up to but it, yeah, it may be the late 30s it comes up to. Yeah, it's before the war. So yeah, it wouldn't have gone for past the 30s, I don't think. So anyway, I've got the whole box set, which is for the whole first series, which is this one. So I've got the whole first series, which is really good. Um, just watching, you know, the beautiful designs and the hair and the makeup. It's just, you know, if you love fashion, then I recommend treating yourself to the House of Elliot. So I've got the whole second series too, um, where um, Beatrice marries Jack Maddox. And then you've got the third series. It's got a strange ending though. It kind of ends where you think, oh, I want to see more. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit disappointed about the ending. I won't say much about it, but yeah, it's it, but it's really good. So yeah, BBC used to be really good once upon a time. I don't watch BBC anymore, but some of their period stuff is brilliant. So anyway, another recent buy, um, just by accident, I found some material on on YouTube, and it's the the Noel Coward collection. So now Coward um, loves some of his, I've got some of his um, old films um, that we watch. Um, some of them are our, our favourites. Um, I can't remember some of them. Um, in Which We Serve, I think In Which We Serve. And there's one about a family that live in a house. And oh, I can't remember, but we watch it lots and lots of times. Anyway, so Noel Coward... Um, back in the, I think it was in the maybe 70s or 80s, um, the BBC, they actually did a, did a theatre production that they filmed and people, like a live audience went to see some of these um, plays that Noel Coward's well known for. Um, Hay Fever, you might have heard of Hay Fever, Design for Living and... What the other one? Private Lives. Yeah, I think a few of them um, are quite well known. Um, Live Spirit, I think he did that too. But yeah, there's, there's really good... Anyway, so there's lots of well-known British actors and actresses in this. And it's got some brilliant... It's, it's really interesting. It's all about these really bizarre um, lovies, you know, from the theatre land. And it's just really interesting, just some of the people. You've got Joan Collins um, was in the one we watched the other night. And you've got some really interesting people in them. So I reckon, yeah, you've got Penelope Keith, Paul Schofield, Judy Dench, Deborah Kerr, um, Hugh Laurie. So you've got tons of people in here. Um, so it features, yeah, 
quite a few plays, dramatised short stories and special features, radio plays. So I bought this on eBay for a really good price. It's not brand new, but, it, you know, you don't need brand new these days. You know, why buy brand new when you can buy something that's used and, you know, it's all good for the environment, isn't it? So another thing I watched recently is The Summer of Rockets. So that's another thing we've watched recently. I watched We watched it on television a few years ago and it's got a few interesting, um, very good actors in it. We've got Toby Stevens, Keely Hawes and Linus Roach and Timothy Spall. So it's a brilliant, written and directed by Stephen Polyakoff. So it's set in the 50s and it's all about espionage and secret service and an inventor and his family. And yeah, it's got lots of mystery and interesting characters in it. So that's another thing we've been watching. So yes, so I've been busy on the needles and I've been busy watching and educating myself on the television. So that's it really for today. So it's been a long one because I haven't been able to, <laughs> to do anything for a while. But hopefully next time I come back, I'll have lots more to share with you. So thank you very much for your time. If you have time, then do subscribe to my channel. Um, I will keep you updated on some other projects I'm doing. Um, as you know, I like to have more than one going because it just makes life more interesting. And I get bored easy if I've got more, like only one or two projects on the needle. So hopefully next time I come back, I'll have something new to show you too. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for sharing your time with me. Have a good weekend and I look forward to catching up with you very soon. So enjoy the summer and I'll see you soon. And I won't leave it so long next time, I promise, for all those that are subscribed to me. So thank you for your time and I'll see you again soon.